Hello everybody and welcome to this video where we are going back into Terminal Punk, Punk Philosophy by V Vale. <clears throat> and we are going to talk about something dreadfully important. The first thing we are going to talk about is community. And the second thing we're going to be talking about is the internet. Because um, two of these things are horribly true. And I don't know if things are the same. And I know they're not the same physically. And I know a lot of people think they might be the same literally, but I don't think they are. <clears throat> so first off, free places to meet. Um, that was a very big thing in like the punk scene and the zinester scene and stuff like that like i've said in the past like there were like a lot of late nights at denny's and kinko's you know but there were also a lot of um clubs that had shows and the shows were cheap enough to where you didn't feel like you couldn't participate Beyond that, there were coffee shops where as long as you bought a cup of coffee, you could sit there for hours and stuff like that. And I know there are like parks and libraries and coffee shops um, and stuff like that as well. But it doesn't seem like and I say it differently in the sense of when I see like kids like um, high school age, junior high, high school age. I see them hanging at Starbucks a lot and um, like I'll go to Starbucks or go buy Starbucks or whatever and I'll see a group of kids if there's one near a high school let's say or a junior high school but for the most part I think a lot of venues um, are closing down or just not around and one way I know this is that I am in one of the biggest metropolitan cities in the world. And so I'm like, okay, let me see if there's any places where people do readings or, you know, like just little, little beat knit coffee house type places or um, just poetry locations. And the poetry places that I have found, because there are a few, I noticed that I'm pretty sure all of them are nonprofit. And what that means is, is that the rent is so damn fucking high that there is no way a place like that could afford to be a for profit business in LA. And that's really fucking sad. So in the L.A. area, there are a few really cool places. There is um, uh, the Sims Poetry Library in Inglewood. There is Beyond Baroque in Venice. There is the Poetry Research Bureau, which is just up the street here. But it's only open for three hours a week. And that's, that doesn't make sense to me. And then there is um, Heavy Manners, I think is what it's called. And that, I think, is an Echo Park, so just a little bit farther. But I'm pretty sure all these places are like libraries where you could go and check out books. And, um, and that's fine if that builds community and that things are happening there and all that other stuff. But it just, the hours of operation on a lot of these places are so minuscule that it's just really sad. But, you know, maybe there are a bunch of coffee houses that I am not giving enough credit to. So I need to look into that more. Um, let's see here. Another thing I wanted to talk about. There's this part in here where he says, Internet kills economies. And I was like, whoa, 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 dude, whoa. But then he continues, and he says, um, prior to the internet, I could pay the rent by publishing my niche magazine and books. 
and a lot of bands could pay their rent by releasing small numbers of records. Now only the 1% or the 1% of 1% can make a living as a superstar. Everyone else puts their music on the internet for free and they try to do these tours where they're sleeping in people's living rooms through Facebook, used to be MySpace. And there isn't as much of an economy anymore for the most rebellious creative people. That hit me pretty hard because I remember way back when, um, when I would be in bands that put out cassette tapes. I was able to live doing that kind of stuff, like doing that and playing little places and even doing like coffee house gigs, um, with just me or like putting on shows that were like three dollar shows and have like five bands on the thing and everybody gets a little bit kind of deal so when you look at things in that sense that the economy is so different now that inflation is what it is that all of these things it's really hard for an artist or um anyone of that nature to be able to make it with um, just how expensive the cost of living is. As someone who used to get paid for their music really well to now just either having to give it away for free or just getting pennies on the dollar for it, it kind of sucks. I guess more people can hear it now than before, maybe. Um, I think the opportunity for more people to hear it is there, but um, that will probably never equate to anything in my wallet. And as far as like being a writer goes, um, I mean, most people will tell you, you have to make your first book free and hook them with an email address or, or to get their email address so you could market to them so they will buy your future books. And that is a way to go. <clears throat> but I think the main problem here isn't the fact that we have to do this. It's the fact that the consumer expects you to do that. And if you don't do that, then there's something wrong with you. Like there's something not right there. There used to be a time when people, including myself, would gladly give money to an artist of some kind for their work. Now that, that seems like a, a weird thing. And when I hear, and this fucking topic, this goddamn monetization topic keeps coming up and it wasn't even supposed to come up in this video. But the idea that artists feel icky asking people for money this came from somewhere this idea of um the art you create not being worth asking someone for money for it that came from somewhere and i think a lot of it is probably due to the internet it's just shocking it's shocking so um i have more to say on this topic and I think I will do it at a later date because I want to really have more of my ducks in a row. But before I go, make sure to run over and get um, my chapbooks, including the poetry on writing books here. Issue number two of The Blood Rag is out now. You can get a lot of my books um, and you could also get um, the Poetic Anarchy books on Amazon. Um, fingering the mundane end of everything and a bunch of other books of mine on amazon my music is available everywhere um, support your local artists support your favorite creators and um, i will talk to you guys later I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Creo and my followers on Patreon, I appreciate the hell out of you guys, and thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew or the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.